Okay guys, ball striking. That's what we're gonna focus on. There's gonna be two movements that we are going to really be very aware of that are gonna give you great ball striking. One of them is gonna be the hand and the other one is gonna be the body. Now, the other day, I uploaded a video of a student of mine, Lynn, having a lesson. So if you wanted to watch that video, that is on the channel. And we're basically doing a little bit of a summary of the, these are the things that I've done with Lynn. So you can see her do it firsthand. And this is exactly what we've been doing and more of the reasons as to why. So the first thing that we have to understand is, is when we get to the top of the backswing position, what we want to do is we want to be in a position where we are pretty centralized. Now, centralized by definition basically just means just staying within your feet, okay? So what we don't want to do is we don't want to move this way. See the way I stay very much in between my feet line. Now, what's really important, okay, is, is how we get there. And this is what I've been doing with Lynn. So there are, there are two very big moves that we need to know to be able to produce this very good centralized backswing. The first one is sequence and the second one is the right hand move. Now, see what happens in the golf swing is when I move the club correctly and I move my hands and arms very much first, this produces what is known as a tilt. Okay, so you can see as I take the club back, see the way I'm not moving my lower body, and this means that it produces a tilt. So when I pause in this position here, okay, it produces a tilt, so it kind of looks like a lot of my weight's on the left side, but it's not. Okay, at this stage, I might start with a little bit of weight on my lead side, but as I take the club back, my weight has now shifted progressively more in towards this right side. And, and the reason why it doesn't look that way is because of, like I say, the sequence. Whilst if I move like this, it looks like all the weight's over my side, but we don't want that. We wanna move the hands and arms very much first. And then from here, I can just continue that sort of feeling of turning. So by the time I get to the top of my backswing, 50% of my weight is on my lead toe, 50% of my weight is on my trail heel, and that will help you get into a really good backswing position, and that is priority number one. Priority number two is width, okay? And a great way to ensure you're getting width is the functionality of this trail hand. So as I swing back towards you guys, you can see the way that my palm is facing very much towards you, and the reason for that is it helps me push the club away from me. And that's why with Lynn, one of, the, one of my sort of pet peeves, if you like, with her is, is when she has this habit of her arms going too far away because then she over-rotates the arms and her hand ends up facing too much this way. I want her to be more this way. And that's why, again, that sort of takeaway of understanding it's very much hands and arms first, and then as she goes from this sort of parallel position and takes it further back, I wanted to make sure she feels like that right palm is facing away from her. This reduces any arm rotation, gets the club face under control, and from here, then you can just release it down. So practice it, and what you're trying to do, the same as Lynn, is understand two things. One is sequence, so it's very much hands and arms and first, and two, as you then go to complete the backswing, you're just gonna lift your arms up, keep the palm pushing pressure away from you, and I promise you, it happens all the time with students. I absolutely promise you, if you get your backswing right and sorted out, the downswing is gonna be, if not natural, it's just gonna be so much easier. So work on it, let me know. I'll see you guys again really soon.